everyone. This is Jackie Cooper with Crypto Mom 2, a talk show and the Blockchain Legal Institute. I want to welcome everyone to this episode and remind you to definitely like and subscribe because there are some really exciting conversations that are in the pipeline and I want to make sure you're always in the know for what's about to happen. So today I have the, the privilege to be um, talking with someone that I've known for over a year now, and he is very distinguished in the field of blockchain. He's a professor and he's with the University of Wyoming. We're going to have a conversation with him in a second. And But for those that are new to uh, Crypto Mom 2, I want to thank you for hopping on. A little bit about my background. I am a, an attorney doing very non-traditional law in the blockchain space, uh, which I'm loving. And I'm also in education. And I'm also the author of the Bitcoin Cinderella. So all that said is that I am a proponent of making sure that as you are navigating blockchain, that you keep current with the uh, the changes that are happening within the space, both the policies, the laws, and just the content, because there's a lot of creativity and people are um, doing a lot of uh, business uh, uses on the blockchain. And it's amazing what is going on. And that's why I really asked um, Steve to hop on because he's at the forefront of both policy advocate advocacy as well as the education side. So, um, and for those that are not familiar with the Blockchain Legal Institute, I'll just share, it's a really a, a centralized library for our decentralized world. And there's resources in every vertical you could possibly think of. And I'm excited to share today that um, the Blockchain Legal Institute is actually in partnership with um you know what's the projects that steve's is involved with so we're going to talk more about that uh, steve how are you doing today should i call you professor um, or can i call no, you steve? Yeah, please <laughs> you, 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 know. <laughs> you know steve is perfectly all right uh jackie we've known each other i thought we knew each other longer than a year but i won't press uh, that um <laughs> you know i think it might be close to two years i think it might be close to two years i think you're right so <laughs> and, and, but thank you so much it's always a pleasure to chat with you and and, um, you know, you you do so much for this space as well, too. So, you know, we're very appreciative, um, you know, to have you working with the University of Wyoming on a couple of our initiatives. So <clears throat> I feel it's I feel it's definitely an honor. So we're going to hit a few different points. So for everyone who's listening, if you don't have paper and pen, don't worry, I'm going to embed all the links so you can come back to this episode and enjoy. So the first thing that we're going to be talking about is an event that's happening in September. Now, mm -hmm. I really wish that I could take off and go, even though I know one of my associates will be there. But the uh, the university is um, hosting a um the Wyoming Blockchain Stampede and the Wyo Build-A-Thon. So why don't you go mm -hmm. ahead and share a little bit more about what's happening there. And uh, it's for those that are listening, it's September 11th through the 15th at the University mm -hmm. of Wyoming. It will be virtual as well. And mm -hmm. for those that are on the audio side, like I said, I will be putting the link in for those that are on the visual side. You can see this great picture and uh, go ahead and share a little bit more about what's going to be happening there. Yeah, I'm, 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 thank you so much for, for asking. Yeah, this is actually our sixth annual um, Wyoming Blockchain Stampede. And as most of you in this space know, anything in this space that's six years old is, is, is you know, been around a little while. Mm -hmm. And um, so what, what this is all about is, as, as most of your uh, viewers and listeners probably know, Wyoming has taken a rather significant regulatory lead here in the United States around digital asset laws and policy. And so the stampede started back six years ago, believe it or not, um, on the suggestion of Joe Lubin from Consensus. And, wow. you know, Joe, uh, Joe um, another famous person in this space, Caitlin Long and I, um, were talking about how can the industry um, recognize and help Wyoming with its initiatives and, you know, bring some notoriety to Wyoming. You know, six years ago, um, we had just started passing our, our digital asset laws. I, I believe the, that first year we had passed a, you know, a, a law that um, changed the money transmitter um, uh, law here in Wyoming to allow exchanges to be able to operate in Wyoming. And 
we had started working on some token taxonomy and some other some other very important bills. And it was Joe Lubin's idea who said, well, I think you should you know, um, throw a hackathon, which is what you know, most of these people called them back then. And so the very first year, it was almost exclusively a hackathon. And in a very traditional sense where we, you know, on a Friday night, we kick things off in a, in a, you know, the university gymnasium with cots and tables and Wi-Fi access, if you remember back in those those days. And, and developers literally hacked together solutions for company challenges um, over the course of that, of that weekend. And they slept in the gymnasium on cots that were donated by the American Red Cross. I mean, it was just a, you know, that was just a amazing, you know, um, first, first event. But it's it's morphed a bit over the over the the six years, and it's now expanded to a entire week. And so let me tell you, um, Jackie, a little bit about what happens during this week. First of all, on Monday and Tuesday, the Wyoming Legislature um, holds a select committee um, um, hearings on Monday and Tuesday around blockchain, fintech, and digital asset um, laws. And what what happens, I mean, this is truly a unique opportunity for people in our community to kind of see how the sausage is actually made, because this is a standing select committee, which means the bills that they create and vote on in this committee goes directly to the Wyoming legislators floor to vote during the session. Most other states have working groups or you know, subcommittees. Wyoming, to the best of my knowledge, is still the only state that has a, a direct select group. So um, what's great about the, um, the hearings that will take place um, uh, on the 11th and 12th is the, the legislature wants to hear from people in the community about what does a state like Wyoming should or can do um, legislatively to create a better environment for our community. So here is an opportunity for people who, who say to themselves, you know, I just wish somebody would, you know, change the law for this to happen. Well, here's your opportunity to pitch that directly to those people. And, and this is not just a, 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 a hearing where they're just listening to you. This is actually one of their four standing quarterly meetings where they discuss legislation, create legislation, and then and then pass it to the floor. So wow. if you really want to be a part of how that how that works, then here's a great opportunity to do that. I am and so sorry that I'm not going to be there. This is like it's like candy for me. I mean, this is just amazing. <laughs> just oh, with amazing. your background, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So 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 I, I will say to any of your uh, viewers or listeners, if you can't make it and you have an idea that you're like, I wish a legislature would fix this problem, right. then send it either to Jackie or send it to me, and we will present it to the Wyoming legislature and see what action they take on it. So real unique opportunity, because very rarely do we actually as, you know, get to participate in government beyond yeah. elections. So, yeah. so uh, then on Wednesday, um, uh, so that's the 13th, we're holding a educational symposium um, in conjunction with the University of Wyoming School of Computing and College of Engineering. And um, we are bringing together academics that, um, that operate in this space, plus cybersecurity, plus you know, some high performance computing. And we're having kind of an educational symposium. And then Wednesday night, we're doing something. And this is why we call it a build-a-thon now instead of a hackathon, is Wednesday night, we're doing our version of Shark Tank, where people, you know, present to a panel of judges in, in our space and in, the, in Wyoming, and you pitch your blockchain idea, and we will award money to those ideas that we think, you know, have, have merit. And so that's a fun event. And then Thursday and Friday uh, on campus in our union building, which is our, you know, our, our student hub, um, we are going to be holding um, two conference tracks on Thursday. 
and one conference track on Friday where we're bringing in guest speakers who are doing the latest and greatest in our space. And we'll have individuals like Hester Pierce from the SEC. We'll have um, Paul Steiner, who is the finance minister for El Salvador, talking about you know, what, um, what's happening in El Salvador with Bitcoin, Chivo, and, and all of that. Um, it. And uh, uh, we're not quite ready to introduce this yet, but one or maybe two pro-digital asset presidential candidates will probably be joining us as well, too. So uh, keep your eye on the agenda on that website that Jackie is going to post. And I'll leave it to your imagination who those people may be. I will tell you that they are from different parties. So that might be too much of a hint. But um, but um, we're trying to see if we can make those schedules work. And then our final keynote speaker, besides our governor and the president of the university, will be a very big friend of our uh, of the University of Wyoming, which is Charles Hoskinson from uh, IOG and the Cardano community. Charles has been a wonderful supporter of blockchain education, not only in Wyoming, but around the world. And I think all of your, you know, viewers and listeners know, you know, Charles has just been, you know, such a, <clears throat> such an, um, a, an incredibly intelligent voice in our community. So we are so proud to, uh, to have him. And, um, and as uh, of note, but probably not something your your um, viewers will participate in, is uh, Friday and Saturday we will be introducing this year for the first time a esports component. Um, there's a lot of synergies between esports and digital assets, and many of the people that are coming into digital assets are quite frankly many of people who have joined digital assets even 10 years ago, started out in the gaming and the esports community. So we're actually going to host two days of, of esports competitions. And on Saturday is who knew there was intercollegiate esports now? <laughs> so so the University of Wyoming will compete against other universities' esports teams. So that that's certainly going to be going to be fun. And we um we uh, launch the hackathon portion of our event on Friday. Um, we're not doing it in the gymnasiums anymore because quite honestly, our event has become global. Yeah. And so, so on Friday night, we kick off the hackathon. So anybody who wants to participate in the hackathon can, can sign up on that same page. And we have company challenges where they sponsor money for you to solve their, their problem. And um, we oh. give you three three weeks to compete uh, to complete the challenge, and then in three weeks from now we'll announce the winners there. So the hackathon portion has changed, and what we noticed was during COVID, um, people really liked when we went online and allowed teams to be created essentially from around the world. We've had we've had um, um, competitors from ninety seven countries participate. Amazing. And if we tried to do that in Laramie, Jackie, you know, um, I don't know how many people listening have ever visited Laramie, but, you know, it's not an easy place to get to. No, <laughs> and and it is not unusual for there to be snow in Laramie in September. So, so um, you know, the online component works out real well. And for our students, um, because part of our mission um, with the Blockchain Center is to build awareness on campus, we throw a giant concert welcoming students back to school. And this year, it's a country Western star named Travis Denning. And um, we have an indoor um, practice football field that we just put several thousand students together and just have a great time to kind of cap off our events. So um, if you can attend the hackathon live, it's a heck of a lot of fun. But you know, look at the agenda and you can participate in whichever portion you want to on Zoom. 
and it will be simulcast live. And we also then post the videos after the fact. So if you can't do it live, you can still see the um, the speakers that you want to after the fact. So I love it. So for everyone who's listening, definitely the link will be below. And I know Steve and I will do an after cap um, after the event. We so will. that will be really exciting. And and everything that you mentioned is something that I I love from country to uh, you know the legislation side. So it's like hitting all the marks unfortunately since i'm too <laughs> i won't be able to come but um i will definitely be there in spirit and um you know talking about uh the event actually i'm going to share the um the center for blockchain and digital in innovation mm -hmm. website you, uh there's a lot of different things that you are doing uh to help educate the community and again, mm -hmm. all these links will be embedded below. Um, you also have um, written a new textbook um, dealing mm -hmm. with chain and web three. And yep, there it is. And that link will be definitely um, <laughs> available. Um, and only because you know what, within our space, things change so fast. And it really is important to add to our growing personal professional library, different books. And, and I, and not, I also believe that public libraries need to have these books too, from an mm -hmm. educational perspective. So, you know, for those librarians that are out there, definitely reach out and get a copy of that. Um, it's important. Jack, Jackie, do you mind if I just make a note? Um, yeah. First of all, um, this is not a small textbook. Not you know, at this all. Is a, this is a, a full-scale academic textbook that was written in conjunction with, I think, one of the smartest women in blockchain today, which is Mary Lassity um, at the University of Arkansas. She and I worked on, on this together and we created this because as leaders of our of the blockchain programs at our respective universities, me obviously University of Wyoming and her in the University of Arkansas, there really wasn't a current textbook that we could use in the classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, what we are doing, we are hobbling together. You know, we'd grab Saifedean a book, uh, a Moose's book, the Bitcoin Standard. Mark Gates had a pretty good, you know, little book about you know the history of blockchain, and we were using commercial books to kind of, you know, you know, really teach, you know, have support material to teach our programs. So we created this um, principally because, um, you know, this is what academics you know needed to be able to effectively teach and you'll notice something interesting about a textbook this size is it sells for 29 dollars on amazon and in fact if you get the electronic version it's only 9.99 so we wanted to make this accessible to everybody most textbooks are two three four hundred dollars and we thought that's nutty and part of the reason why um, we can sell it for that price is both Mary and I have waived all royalties and all the all the proceeds from this book go to the University of Arkansas and the University of Wyoming's education funds to fund further education. Uh, Mary and I do not make a penny off this. And um, it is, this was a passion project for us and we wanted to have the price point where it could be accessible to anybody, high school faculty that wanted to teach blockchain, community colleges, um, other universities, and more importantly, even adult education. So this is, if you want to learn more about blockchain, blockchain use cases in a in a academically delivered format, then um, I think this is about the, the best publication you're going to find out there to do it. So and I the what I appreciate about that is that there are many University of Wyoming has been definitely a thought leader in this area, but there are many universities and colleges that are just starting out to mm -hmm. look at how to approach teaching about blockchain, cryptocurrency, and that type of thing. So with that, I want to share a page that's called the Y the Wyoming B because. Mm -hmm. Um, you have, uh, in partnership with uh, different groups, created mm -hmm. an academic resource that mm -hmm. can be used um, uh, for those that want to set up something to teach. It's, you know, educational modules, mm -hmm. 12 of them, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and um, they're for high school and community college students. And, you know, for those that are listening, definitely um, reach out to me. I can definitely, um, you know, or reach out to Steve. And if you reach out directly to Steve, let him know that you heard it, you know, through our conversation, because mm -hmm. we're working in partnership to share the existence of these modules. So that way, um, everyone can have access. I know um, as an author of the Bitcoin Cinderella book, which is, you know, a series of fairy tales, I felt that there was a lack of um, information out there at different generational areas. And so what you created actually is important content because I know as a teacher, I'm at the elementary school side, but I see what's going on in the high school side in the public school. Mm -hmm. um, financial fintech education is approached from an older school model. Not a lot of the new information is incorporated to share with the students to have them understand what is cryptocurrency? What are digital assets? What is blockchain? And not just from a financial investment perspective, but from a career perspective and from the skill sets that they need. And for me, as an as an attorney, I've I've crossed my, I've crossed over in a variety of, of of jobs using my 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 legal background. The same thing can be said, you know, as we teach kids or students, young adults they might start off in one path and they might go to another path and the blockchain community is growing. They need quality people to hire and we need to generate um, students within our, the United States borders, even though, you know, other countries are also able to get these modules, but we, we need to be thinking about, um, you know, how do we educate our, our student population so they can grow? Um, Steve, why don't you go ahead and share a little bit more about, you know, what, the vision that you had with these modules sure. and why the university became part of it? Uh, happy to, Jackie. And I think you did a great job. It's the the challenge with blockchain companies right now, and I, t I talk with a lot of blockchain companies, is finding a well-trained workforce. Mm -hmm. And what we've discovered as, as university academics, as I've talked to my colleagues, the challenge that we all faced was um, we weren't having students come into our universities saying, you know, I want to I want to get involved in blockchain because high schools haven't been um, really dealing with this subject matter. And frankly, I think, you know, I don't want to say when you get to the university, it's too late um, by no means. Um, but. You know, I, I think the time to whet people's appetites about um, blockchain um, and quite frankly, STEM in general is in high school. Mm -hmm. And unquestionably, I, I, I consider blockchain education as as STEM. This is this is a, a learning about a, a technology, how to deploy the technology, how to um, how the technology will disrupt business. And, and, and I think the time to excite young minds are really eighth through 12th grade. So we created this program particularly around that. And we wanted to um, create something that was very easy for existing faculty, even if they didn't understand blockchain themselves, to be able to introduce into their programs. Most high schools um, have a, um, a uh, entrepreneurship class or a business and marketing class or even a computer science class. And so we designed this program that any of that faculty could essentially plug this um, education into their existing curriculum and, and you know, really provide, um, I think, something very meaningful for these students to think about in their futures. And it's not just blockchain education in these modules. We do talk about you know, cybersecurity and the importance of that. We talk about online security. Um, I will tell you, um, as an educator, uh, I'm often appalled at how much um, personal privacy 
young people give away today for convenience. You know, I mean, I, when I ask my average student, you know, before you click accept on a EULA, who's read it? I don't think I've seen, seen in my years of teaching a single hand going up saying, yes, professor, I read them all the time. Right. <laughs> you oh, know? And, and even and, even adults are guilty of that. Yeah. And what, you know, we give away tremendous amounts of our of our um, our um, personal identity uh, in that particular case. So we developed this program um, so that um, when you get to college, you know, you know which courses to seek out, you know which programs to seek out. And listen, um, you know, blockchain is one of the fastest growing um, industries in the US right now. Uh, LinkedIn did a, a, a study last year and in that study, uh, they asked employers what was the most important skill set that employers were looking for today. And it was understanding how to deploy this new technology into their businesses. So yeah. companies are thinking about it, but they don't know what to do with it yet. So, um, so we want students, um, you know, from high school on understanding the importance of STEM and how um, their world will be um, really um, uh, will will be disrupted by new technologies. Look, you know, um, <clears throat> blockchain, metaverse, um, uh, machine learning, and now um, you know, generative AI. Exactly. Yeah. In in fact, um, on uh, this coming Friday, we're kicking off our very first applied AI course, which is being taught by an, another brilliant professor named Daniel Conway. And, you know, because, you know, we understand that it's our responsibility as educators to help students understand how will these new technologies disrupt industry. And our uh, most of our programs, I mean, obviously at the University of Wyoming, we do teach everything from, you know, um, from, you know, Python, Solidity, Go, um, all the programming languages. We teach smart contracts. Um, you know, um, we are the first uh, Division One university in the country to actually have a blockchain degree. You can get a degree in blockchain at the University of Wyoming. Uh, we are launching two um, advanced degrees right now, a master's in blockchain for petroleum engineers. And wow. next year, we're going to we're going to launch a a, a master's in science for blockchain out of the College of Business. And so if you really want a formalized education in blockchain, there's really no better school than the University of Wyoming. And um, but, you know, we understand at the University of Wyoming, it's not it's a it's about teaching what you do with this technology. You know, as you mentioned early on, Jackie, you know, it's not just cryptocurrency. Smart contracts are going to change the way businesses operate. Mm -hmm. NFTs are changing the way that assets are being monetized. Um, you know, uh, industries like the accounting industry, the finance industries, the legal industries yeah. are adopting these new technologies um, and and using them in an, in unbelie unbelievably new and creative ways. And our program at the University of Wyoming stays ahead of that and helps students understand not just what blockchain is, but the so what of blockchain. And, and so, um, you know, we encourage anybody who wants to study blockchain um, as a student or even as an adult from a, an adult education standpoint to reach out to us. And, um, you know, we have different programs that can help everybody. Yeah, no, I uh, I've I've been impressed for the longest time with the University of Wyoming. That's why the partnership between Blockchain mm -hmm. Field Institute and the university is is something that I I highly value. I know that one of the areas that um, we haven't really had a chance to talk about, but uh, because of my background in special ed, I'm extremely mm -hmm. interested in how blockchain and this whole um, area is going to be. Um, provide more accessibility and mm -hmm. really crack through some of the areas that are needed. And I know that recently, probably in the news, depending upon when you guys hear this, um, there was discussion about how on art with artificial intelligence, a woman who was not speaking 
was able to speak. And that was because of the implant and the use of, you know, chat GBT and text to speech, mm -hmm. the creativity within the use of these areas to help people provide social good. I mean, that's a passion area of mine. And so I'm really interested to see mm -hmm. how business applies this. And mm -hmm. um, at some point, I'm sure, you know, I'll probably figure out a way to teach a class on that. But for the moment, we are... Oh, 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 first of all, Jackie, I'm going to find a way for you to teach a class because University of Wyoming has a law school and we have a um, blockchain and law program mm -hmm. at the University of Wyoming. And by the way, uh, I'm, I'm really, uh, as we wrap up, um, I'm, 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 I'm especially drawn to projects that do create public good. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the projects that I've been working on for a couple of years now is how blockchain can break the cycle of human trafficking yes. and how blockchain can bring um, information from uh, public research libraries to everybody using NFTs. Um, you know, it's, you know, we at the university look for those unique use cases, you know, not the board ape yacht club. It's yeah. how do we, how do we apply NFTs to ESG programs, for example, you know, and so, um, you know, in the next couple of years, I, you know, I still think when people ask me about blockchain, I think we're in the middle or the end of the first inning, <laughs> you know, it's, there's so much ahead of us now in, in blockchain. So, um, so anyone who's interested in, you know, partnering with the university, um, you know, please feel free to reach out to either Jackie or me and, and yep. we'll, we'd be delighted to see how we can work together. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, before we wrap up, one of the things I do want to mention, since you, you touched on the human trafficking side, the mm -hmm. Blockchain Legal Institute is actually a partner with the Anti-Human Trafficking Intelligence Initiative. And, um, you know, th with Larry Cameron and, and the other um, groups that are, are with them. So, and for those that are listening, definitely like and subscribe because I'm doing two interviews next week with him and his associates about a variety of topics. And, you know, cybersecurity uh, impacts a lot of different areas. So um, for those that are also listening, you know, I'm going to have the B information. So you can definitely check that out. If you want to incorporate that into your educational programs, there'll be Steve's book. So you'll be able to do that. There'll also be the stampede information. Uh, there's a host of wonderful information that you'll be able to click through on here. And also remember, even if you hear this conversation after the event, the university um, is constantly doing updates on events. So mm -hmm. definitely, you know, visit the link or visit um, the event side of the Blockchain Legal Institute because we'll always be posting updates there. So, you know, again, um, there's going to be constant updates that you can participate in and enjoy. Um, any last minute thoughts, Steve, before we sign off? No, just, you know, it's uh, thank you very much for this opportunity to to speak to your viewers and your listeners. And, you know, um, I'm just delighted to you know, have you as a friend and to work with you. I think you do so much for this community as well, too. So, you know, thank you for, you know, allowing me the time to talk about what we're doing. Yeah, no, it's it's exciting to me because education and the space is is fun. It's definitely fun and it and it's helping a lot of people. So as I always say at the end of all my conversations, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. We are all so interconnected. We're all part of one world and now even more than ever. So thank you everyone. Definitely like and subscribe and go visit Wyoming, even if it's on the virtual side. If you can't hop on a plane, you can click on your computer and you can attend an event. So enjoy. I'll talk to everyone soon. Bye guys.